Hello everyone! So today I thought I'm just going to share a quick video of my March submission for the Soap Challenge Club. I felt I'd put a lot of work, a lot of different detail and effort into this challenge that I wanted to share what exactly I had been doing. So quite often we have a certain technique for these soap challenges that we need to complete, that we need to be working with. This one was different, it was a blind challenge so we couldn't share anything in advance anywhere on social media or with anyone. And also it was based around two themes. We could either work with a the theme of Alice in Wonderland or Charlotte in the Chocolate Factory. I decided to work with Alice in Wonderland and just also decided on a technique that I rarely use, which is soap dough. So I'm mainly, most of my entry was actually created with soap dough. And in this video, I'm just going to give you a bit of a guide and a bit of an insight into how I created my soap dough and how I created my finished design. Now, as you can see, I've divided my big batch into smaller containers here. Obviously, I thought in advance about the different colors that I needed and just made sure that I have got enough of each color and divide them in these little containers here to get them to that soap dough consistency. You could just keep the entire batch in the natural color, in that kind of yellowish color, get that to a soap dough consistency and then as and when you needed it, add on the different colors yourself at that time however i've never done it this way and from what i've heard you may just need a lot more mika to get to that same color and i think looking at this right now you can just mix it in so much easier when it's that kind of medium trace um, soap mix right there i have at this point not added a fragrance oil my fragrance oil I'm using here is a marzipan fragrance oil from the soap kitchen. It's an absolutely delicious fragrance oil that I use for one of my normal soaps as well. However, it's worth noting that it really accelerates trace and I wanted to make sure that at this point I can really blend in my colors nicely without having essentially soap on a stick. So I'm avoiding the fragrance oil until I'm really happy with all my different colors and then add it on at the end. The recipe that I'm using here is a all plant-based ingredients, butters and oils recipe. It is not a special recipe for soap dough. It is the recipe that was suggested to us in the Soap Challenge Club and it worked really, really well. However, you could use any recipe that you have, any of your normal soap recipes will do. It might just be depending on the detail you want to add that some recipes work better than others but in general any recipe can be turned into a soap dough recipe which is brilliant really now whilst i've been giving you all that background detail you've probably seen me mixing all sorts of different colors together here i'm trying to create a different kind of a purple so it was not just a slightly lighter color compared to the one on the left but just giving this a slightly pink touch. So most of these are just standard Mikis, but I'm also using some um, oxides and these particular pink ones here, they are actually non-bleed pigments and they just work really nicely in terms of adding a bit of warmth to some of these Mika colors. Now, if you've already had a look at my finished picture, you will probably recognize which colors I used where for which part of the soap. Obviously, the biscuits needed the topping. You will see that in a minute how I did that. The lettering needed different colors. The oysters needed different colors. So I had all these different shades, especially of pinks and purples that I needed. Um, this one I just mixed was for the faces of those little oysters. Now it is time to finally add that fragrance oil, the marzipan from the soap kitchen, which really, really smells very delicious, but does massively accelerate. So it is not recommended for any kind of detailed designs that you may create with any soaps. Works beautifully here. Now, I also would like to point out at this point that these submissions here are not soaps that I have had assessed. I don't have any cosmetic product safety reports for these. These are just for the soap challenges. So I was able to really freely choose and play with my Mikas. I didn't have to take note down all my little percentages. Um, so that's a really good way to experiment and explore without having to worry about any legalities. So these soaps are never going to get sold. They're just for decoration here at home. 
and here they all are they are looking good and they're smelling absolutely divine and it is now time to put them away so the next step here is you obviously have got your mixed colors you have got your batter and usually you would now put it into molds and leave it for however long your recipe takes usually 24 to 48 hours before unmolding and cutting and curing etc now with soap dough obviously the process is different because you do not want the soap to get hard so what you want to be doing is take something like I do take some cling film wrap it up really tightly try and get rid of any air that's in there now obviously if you can and you, you're more professional and you're really set up for this you can get something that sucks out the air out of a bag etc I don't have that because I don't often work with soap dough so basically I've just used cling film, I wrapped it up really tightly um, so that there's no air in the actual containers I then twist them obviously at the top as you can see they're really tightly packed and I then put them in my little takeaway boxes with the lids on and after 24 hours I take them out, knead them and then literally package them up again. As long as they're airtight they will last for a very long time. Obviously the better packaged, the more sealed the packaging, the less air gets to them the longer they will last. I've only ever used them within a couple of weeks or so but I've heard you can possibly keep them for a few months or even a year or depending on how you store them. Now mine are all wrapped up here now and they're ready to be stored for the next 24 hours before I work with them again. Now I would like to give you just a little glimpse into the actual treasure box making. What you can see on the very right is that blue rectangular box that is one solid piece of soap. It's not various pieces stacked together and I created this by using a bigger Tupperware box and a smaller Tupperware box in the center just to make sure I wasn't wasting any soap. Um, I poured obviously all my mix in, left it to dry and once it was hard enough to be taken out of the box I then made sure I cut off any uneven outside and inner parts and create that rectangular treasure box shape. What you can see on the left that I'm currently taking off here is a sheet of soap dough. So this was done a few days ago by this point and I inserted this into my treasure box just to give it that really smooth finished look. I didn't want any uneven parts so I could have saved myself this but I just thought it looks a lot nicer if it's got a proper nice straight thin sheet in the center of my treasure box. I then added all the additional extra bit of detail, so the golden on the top of the treasure box, as well as of course the handles and the legs. I also had a different color blue, as you can see, inserted into the side parts of this treasure box. And then this was all done. So all we needed now were the biscuits. Here's one of the soap shapes I'd already cut out using just some standard biscuit cutters. And I decided for this one, actually, I really wanted some golden glittery topping, soap dough topping. So I just took some plain soap dough from a different batch, mixed in that golden mika, rolled it out, and then used that cookie cutter again on top to press on that soap dough topping for that um, first biscuit. Now for all these little um, rolling out jobs, I did use a bit of cling film. I just try to reuse it as much as possible as I don't like using this kind of plastic at all. Um, but it just helped with not getting stuck anywhere and lifting it off the table surface easily. Soap dough should never be sticky, but obviously when you're working with these thin, very thin layers, it is a little bit easier to be using something like cling film in this case. So I just need to remove all these outside bits and then of course the actual soap from this cookie cutter here. And as you can see it turned out into a really lovely golden shiny sparkly layer here. Really thin even layer as well when you look from the side. So I'm very happy with that and the next step is just so to speak adding on the lettuce on top of this biscuit. And for this, of course, we do need our different colored soap doughs from the previous day. You can see that pink one here. I'm breaking off just a little bit that I need, tidying away the rest quickly. And then it does require a little bit of kneading, just warming it up a little bit. And then it's really lovely to use. You can remold it again and again. It's a really lovely consistency. 
Now, of course, I'm not going to show you the whole process of all the letters of all the different biscuits and all the details because you would literally be sitting here for hours. This has probably been my absolutely most time consuming project I've ever been working on. And I'm just going to give you some little snippet insights here now as to how I went about doing these letters. By the time I was making these letters here, the soap dough had gone through saponification, so it was absolutely fine for me to just handle it without gloves. But do bear in mind that if you are using soap dough when it hasn't completed its saponification process, you will need to be wearing gloves just to protect your skin. And here it is, that finished first biscuit. It's golden and glittery with pink, and I'm very happy with this. Swiftly moving on to biscuit number two. Now, when I say swiftly, all of this process took several days. So this was not as swiftly as it looks in the video, but it was good fun regardless. My main problem with this one was that I did not find a shape exactly how I wanted it. So I had to be a little bit creative and to create this particular design, I had to cut some biscuit cutters apart and have some straight lines just to come up with that rectangular shape. The rest of the process is exactly how it was with biscuit number one. So there's nothing else to add here. I'm just going to show you a couple of little parts of it so you can see what it looked like. It has not been attached properly here. So these are not straight, not fixed yet in case you're wondering. For soap number three, I decided to go for a different design. I went for the clamshell technique. I simply didn't want all three soaps to look the same plain colors. Of course, because I used soap dough again, you couldn't really see the design in the end because it was underneath my top layer, but that was fine. Now here you can see why I'm using the cling film. It is a lot easier to get that thin layer of soap dough off my work surface and to make sure that it's got a really smooth surface here. Now, once I've peeled this away, it's just about getting that biscuit out of the biscuit cutter and then again, designing it with the letters on top. So nothing again different here to the other two biscuits, but I love the side view of the biscuits here. Look how straight and neat these are looking. I'm really, really happy with that. And now here it is all put together. It looks so straightforward and simple, but it took such a long time. It was an incredibly fun and exciting project to be working with. But of course you needed that soap base first, which needed to harden in the mold before being able to use that. Then the making of the soap dough and leaving that to saponify before then finally being able to work step by step through the various soap dough processes. What you can't see here is also the backdrop I created for this. You can watch that in a separate video using soap piping. That again was a huge amount of fun. I really enjoyed that. I saw that as a real challenge. It was great work, very detailed work, but good fun. I'd also mentioned my bonus category entry for this month's soap challenge. Now, these were the little oysters that I made just using soap dough. And whilst it was a real fun project, I am certainly no expert at making little creatures out of a soap dough. I think I'm more of a soap pouring kind of person. So I'm not going to bore you with hours of footage here, but just to give you a little glimpse inside as well. You can see I'm painting the eyes here. Now, what I initially did was use soap dough for the eyes and the mouth. And I can tell you that just did not look very good. It did not look pretty. It looked rather spooky. So I quickly went over to just painting using Mika with rubbing alcohol. And then some of these parts by this point were slightly drier. So I just used a little bit of water to just give it a little bit more moisture again to make uh, various parts stick to each other. Those cute little feet are of course just one example of that because they were such tiny amounts and they'd been sitting on the side, they had just gotten a little bit drier. So that little bit of water just did the trick here. All in all, I would say my oysters are quite cute. <laughs> They're by no means professionally looking. I'm certainly not going to swap my normal soap making for that kind of soap making, but it was a fun project to have done. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, just please leave a comment below and subscribe to my videos if you enjoy them. Thank you very much.